Uh-oh, that can't be good. Another interesting day of MG Rover ownership lies ahead. Once the car had cooled down a bit, I relied on the oldest trick in the book. Carefully remove the coolant cap, refill the cooling system, bleed out any air that's there, turn the heaters to hot, and slowly proceeded to my destination, knowing full well that the system wasn't holding any pressure and that I needed to keep the temperature as low as possible. I worked out quite quickly this was a pressurisation issue because the boiling over happened in traffic at around 108 degrees according to my OBD2 readout. The only way that a cooling system will boil over at that temperature is if it's at atmospheric pressure. It's pretty easy to work out that this is the cause. At sea level, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius but increase this by just 10 psi, around the same pressure this cooling system will run at, and it rises all the way to 115 degrees. With the concentration of antifreeze present, the coolant should boil at 120 degrees as a minimum. The following information applies to all variants of the Rover 25, 45, MGZR, MGZS, F and TF, apart from 45 and ZS models fitted with a V6 engine. The standard cap is part number PCD100160, but for V6 variants it's PCD000040. You must use the V6 specific cap with the Rover 45 V6 and MGZS180 because the cooling systems operate at higher pressure and won't function correctly with a PCD100160 cap fitted. So, here are the four caps commonly available. PCD100160XP, the DMGRS supplied cap made by Febby, the generic yellow cap of doom, often punted out by Land Rover parts suppliers, and finally, the new kid on the block, the dimpled copy cap. We'll look at each type in a little bit of depth. This is the inside of a PCD 10160 XP cap. So we have the cap body, the valve, the insert that holds the valve, a spring that applies the pressure to the back of the valve to stop the cap opening until the set pressure is reached, and the seal. Take the coolant cap off any MG Rover vehicle, well, one of the black coolant caps anyway, and this is what you'll see. You'll see a brass valve through a small aperture. But if we turn this over, we find that the brass part is actually an insert in a larger valve assembly. So the small spring is only there to hold this valve closed against vacuum. And the reason being that when your car is running normally, a little bit of steam is going to be produced. And if by chance any of that does vent through the cap, when everything cools back down, there's going to be a slight vacuum in the cooling system. And what this does is it allows a tiny amount of air to enter the cooling system, well, just the header tank, to sort of offset the vacuum and keep everything at atmospheric pressure. But as soon as there's any pressure on this side, which is the side that will be fighting against the pressure of the cooling system when it's hot, it seals firmly against a rubber seal that's just behind the brass disc. So, pretty clever system. And that's the same for all of the black cap variants. The different factor is, of course, how well they're made. And we'll find out that that's pretty crucial. Right, so that's vacuum dealt with. How about the actual pressure of the cooling system at a set point at which it vents to atmosphere? For example, if the car is overheating, to protect the rest of the cooling system, hoses, pipes, etc., from damage. Well, you can see here we've got this quite chunky spring, and that sits on the back of the valve assembly we just talked about in its little holder. This is then clipped inside the cap. It's quite hard to get back in, so I won't do it now. Essentially, when the system is under pressure it, to vent, it will have to overcome the force of this pretty sizable spring. And the rating of this spring is what will set the actual pressure the cap will vent at. So in V6 models, this spring is actually slightly thicker, meaning you'll need a higher pressure to overcome the force held against the valve. Really simple, elegant system. However, a caveat. The reliability of the cap is dictated by how well this seals against this. And you can actually see in each variant of the cap we've got here, the quality is wildly different. So this is the XP cap, and when it's fitted together, there's a lot of movement there. The rubber part this sits on is quite narrow, 
And also, the sort of the profile of the valve itself has quite a sharp indentation. And the issue you've got is that will sit in the same place, but if the cap vents once, it's not always going to land back exactly in the same place where it's previously sat. And that means you've got the potential for leaks because there is that movement you can see there. And there's nothing guiding the valve back to exactly the same place within this holder. There is a rubber seal, but as I say, it's already got a groove from just being in storage. This cap has never been used. And the acid issue you're going to have, if it does vent, will it reseal in exactly the same place? And if the answer is no, you're going to have a loss of pressure. Oddly, the XP cap has the narrower part of the seal, the part facing the camera in the video now, sealing against the coolant tank itself. I'm not sure how that will impact operation, but it's quite a narrow sort of surface to seal against the tank, and just makes me think that if it was to slip slightly in that groove in the housing it sits in, could potentially lead to pressure loss. This is the Febby cap. Just double check, yeah. Got the correct markings there. Interestingly, this has all the part numbers stamped onto it. The correct dimple is for the, in quotes, proper item, but also PA66 GF30, which is a glass fiber blend that's been used for the body and the insert. There's also a GF30 stamp on here. The XP cap and the sort of dimple copycat don't have that anywhere on them which is interesting because this is by far the most firm cap it has no flex in it at all which is a good thing because as plastic gets hot it gets soft and when you've got threads holding it onto a coolant tank that's not a good thing so the valve in the febby is a really snug fit here there's practically no movement there the only movement there is my fingers on the valve the valve itself isn't moving it's just a shadow you can see so no matter how many times you operate this it's always going to land in exactly the same place which is good because it means that even if that raw seal does get a little groove in as it has here if it's landing back in the same place when it reseals in theory that isn't an issue so yeah so actually really impressed with how well that fits there that's great and you got the spring set there and all clipped together it's also worthy of note it took a lot of force to get the cap to unclip the others came apart fairly easily but the feather cap was not for disintegrating involuntarily so that's good too and this cap as you can see by the light ring on it because i did do a test fit this earlier sits with a larger portion of the seal against the rim of the expansion tank, giving it a lot of area to seal. It's also a really nice, soft rubber. So yeah, that is definitely the nicest seal out of the four. Hmm, impressive. Onto the generic yellow cap of doom. And aptly named, I'm afraid. It was very easy to take apart. I sort of had to look at it the wrong way and it fell into two pieces. And that's all you really get with these. Simplicity, 10 out of 10. But build quality, half out of 10, I would say, maybe. 0.25 out of 10, it's, it's fairly horrendous. So you have a dual valve system. So it's the same function as the other caps, except done in cheap plastic. And you can see why these fail all the time. If you have one of these, please replace it with a decent cap before it causes some further damage because these are just absolutely dire. Uh, we'll run through it because it's a little different to the others. This is the vacuum vent, but as you can see, it just it's just free to go all over the place wherever it wants. This whole body is made of rubberized plastic, but there's no actual special seal there, so it's just potluck whether it seals back up again. And likewise, this is the coolant vent for if there's an overpressure in the system, and it just feels poorly made. That's just terrible. It's quite a large sort of number of positions it can resettle in when the pressure drops. There's no metal parts, it's just cheap plastic. And there's no 
glass fiber markings on it, so I don't know if it is the correct blend of glass fiber to resist a bit of heat, but I don't want to find out. And yeah, that's really that. We're going straight in the bin where it belongs. And finally, last but not least, we have the cause of today's boiling over as featured at the start of this video. This is the dimpled copy cap. Aptly named because it has the cap design of the real deal, but you'll notice no GF30 markings and it's oh so soft. <laughs> That's ridiculous. As soon as that gets hot, it's going to turn to butter, which it did. And it was actually pulling off the threads that caused the boiling over. But it's a minor miracle it lasted that long because the rest is pretty horrendous. So similar design as the others. But you'll notice the seal in there has this just poorly machined awful finish. You can feel the roughness when you move the valve around, but also look at that movement. There's nothing to positively center it. It's gonna land wherever it wants when it reseats and probably not seal. You can feel there that some parts it's just landing on plastic. It's not even sealing against rubber. It's just not what you want. And even the action of the, the vacuum valve feels just awful. <laughs> That's terrible. Not what you want at all. And all of it's just poorly machined. And there's a lot of these caps floating around at the moment. I've seen many of them on eBay. So unless it's Febby branded or a new old stock genuine cap, I wouldn't bother. There is some oily gunk in there because as, as we know, the ZR is going through the early stages of head gasket failure, but the machining on that is just absolutely terrible. Gunk all over the spring. The spring is also really light, so it's not gonna hold anywhere near as much pressure as the others. And finally, the tank seal. Look at the finish on that. It's really thin and it's just, it looks like it's been cut in the dark with a really blunt knife. <laughs> the finish on it's horrendous. Truth be told, I have this cap on the car because I had a few of them as a sample, which needless to say, were rejected immediately. And they've been sat for some time on the shelf and I was curious, I thought, you know, how bad can it be? There's your answer. A quick Greg stop turned into a 15 minute waiting for car to cool down ordeal. Uh, obviously, thankfully there's no more engine damage than there already is because of the head gasket failure, but it could have been much worse. I'd be pretty upset if this was a, a pristine engine that I was really trying to look after and this happened to it. And that about covers it. I hope that's been useful to you and you can use this knowledge going forward with your cap buying decisions. I highly recommend the Febby cap to say every part of it is just really well made. And that valve is fantastic. I really like that. And the fact there's no movement in it just sells it for me. I can pick it up. That's just wonderful. No movement in that at all. Get yourself a Febby cap. A final update, the car hasn't boiled over again since fitting the Febby cap. Great news! If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to see my future releases. Along with various car related topics, I'll also be covering travel, a bit of tech, and deep dives into topics I find interesting. You never know, you might like them too! See you next time, and until then, take care. Cheers!